This video is not just for the lovers on Valentine's Day. It's also for those that are heartbroken. I have some balloons to get me in the mood. Okay, balloons get you in the mood for love? Interesting. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think how to tie that together. They're full, like your heart is full. And it takes just one little, you know, and then your heart's empty. So the first cake we're gonna talk about is my champagne cake. Cause champagne is good for both these occasions, right? If you really think about it, if you're in love, you have to share the champagne. And if you're not, you don't. You can have a Galentine's Day and you could just pop champagne. Why do we need to be in love to pop champagne? So I love the light pink cakes that I made for this bottle. And then of course I had to infuse Prosecco. I know we call it champagne and then I used like not champagne. It's an expensive ingredient. Yeah, no one needs to know. And so I doused each layer, not just with simple syrup, but with champagne. I started to build the bottle as three little cakes. I just find it easier to keep them neat and tidy on the way up. You know what I thought of again, while I was building this cake, it brought me back to like my cake decorating for client days. Cause I made a lot of cakes in the shape of bottles. But once I made a cake for a client and it was a specific bottle of wine. They gave me pictures of it that he loved. Do you know when they brought the cake out, he broke it? Like, I think he just thought, oh, they, they bought me a bottle because it was like an expensive bottle of wine. Yeah. So he oh grabbed God. it and that upper part is gum paste, just like in this cake and like oh. crushed and it crushed. I'm thinking, imagine what he felt in that moment. <laughs> like, like, I just crushed a bottle. It's true. I feel bad for whoever ordered the cake from, like all that work and... Yep. Yep. So, speaking of the part you can crush, I always make the sort of neck of the bottle out of gum paste. It's just too thin to make out of cake. So, uh -huh. it's not worth it. So, what I do is just use an empty wine bottle and I'll make a couple of necks out of gum paste just in case they do break in the process. As I stack the three cakes on top of one another, I make sure to put a dowel through the whole cake and right down to the base board. This will really stop your cake from wobbling because it isn't that wide and it's very tall. Did the cake ever wobble? It still wobbles, like you probably don't notice it as much on camera, but it's because it's so light. Yeah. You just feel like even using the bench scraper, you'll just move the cake over. That's why the dowel really helps. Without a dowel, it would feel impossible. So for the fondant, I actually chose, I love during the holidays how they release special edition bottles of alcohol. And this one I made had this beautiful fabric like sleeve over the bottle and I just loved it and I thought it was perfect. So I'm going to recreate that by rolling out some very light pink fondant and creating a texture on the surface of the fondant with a textured rolling pin. Using the rolling pin is really easy and effective. The hardest part is when you smooth the fondant around the cake, you don't want to erase all that texture you just created. So you don't want to over smooth. No. You don't want to, we can't have that. Don't you hate it when guys over smooth? Exactly. Nothing is worse than men trying to over smooth. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? You don't do that, do you, Jengis? No. Okay, good. We're so easy to figure out, I just don't get it. I used a real piece of cork on the inside of the bottle and the actual, I don't know what you call that thing, that wire thing that holds the cork. It has a name. The cage. I feel like I should know this. So I'm rolling out some more of that pink fondant, but really, really, really thin. You can use gum paste as well because you actually want to drape it over the top of the bottle and let it overlap itself the way it would on a bottle. Oh, the label. This is straight up the hardest part of a bottle cake because the great thing about food coloring markers is you can make a template, trace it, and then hand draw the label. And the markers allow you to really perfect whatever font it is. Is it's much easier than painting. However, the problem is because we have to wrap the label around a round bottle, we can't let the label dry. So there's this fine line of having to do all this careful writing quickly enough that you need to pay attention, but you don't want to take so long that once we pick up the label and wrap it around the bottle, it starts cracking. So I'd say that this is the hardest part of the cake. I did a bottle of Moe, so it has that like ribbon wrapped around. So that's the next thing I did. And it's the perfect way to hide the seam between the fondant of the bottle and the foil of the neck, because that's exactly where it lands. So I'm going to add the gold detail on the ribbon, the medallion that 
goes in the center. And then I have to also paint the foil on the bottle, which is a really beautiful metallic soft pink. Not as soft as the whole bottle, but soft enough. This was the actual size of a bottle of champagne, so it required dowels and boards. It was tall, and the bigger cakes get, the more of that they need. There was a special edition bottle of champagne for Valentine's, like this would be it. This is, this is so Valentine-y. If you're in love or you're heartbroken, champagne is for everyone. It is, it's for any day, any time. That's right. That's right. If you're grabbing a bottle of champagne to celebrate your Galentine's Day this year, I have the perfect way for you to celebrate. We have a bunch of live baking tutorials lined up for you, and some of them are specifically for Galentine's Day. Who needs a bunch of flowers when you could have a bunch of baking tutorials? It's true, or balloons. I mean. Yeah, our cookie expert Megan is doing a Galentine's Day cookie class on February 2nd, and it's the Perfect excuse. Check out the link right here for all of the classes we have lined up for Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day. This next cake is not for anyone. The human heart cake. This is, did I make heart before brain? No idea. Which organ did I make first? I don't know. If you guys know, let us know below. We've all forgotten at this point. <laughs> But I love this cake and I'm sure I've talked about this before, but I actually made this cake on the TV show I was on, which Jocelyn and Connie created. And I got to remake it on the channel. And it was just as weird the second time as it was the first time. I don't know why you'd want to make this, but hey, send this cake to the person who broke your heart. Which is a great idea. Also very creepy. So be careful yes. of being charged. True. Maybe leave a note, this is cake. <laughs> You know what I mean? So to make this cake, I made a deep red velvet cake. I baked it in two half sphere pans, and then I just sort of started to shape the heart, which it's not heart shaped at all. Who came up with heart shaped? Heart shaped is not the shape of a heart. I have so many questions and I don't know the answer. Most of the detail on the heart will actually come afterward because there's all these like, veins and valves and ventricles that need to be applied to the outside of the cake. Once you're happy with the base shape of your heart, you can crumb coat it, and then we get to cover it in a lovely flesh-colored fondant. Oh, I love, I love this color. It really makes you think of Valentine's, you know? Yes, it's like pale flesh. So after you crumb coat your cake, you can add all the veins. Don't ask me to name the veins. Don't ask me to tell you what they do. They are very important. And then after you've placed your veins, you can cover your heart in a lovely flesh tone fondant. It's really important that when you smooth the fondant, you're smoothing it between all the valleys of the veins, right? So the veins are, look, now look like they're part of the heart. So now I need to add some valves uh, and vent, I don't even know what ventricles are, but I, I like the sound of it. It's a big word, you know what I mean? I'm gonna use that flesh tone fondant and start to apply them to the outside of the heart. So I just kept looking at pictures on my phone. I kept looking at the model and just added them where I thought they looked right. I remember making this and thinking for sure there's like doctors watching who are going to tell me this is incorrect. <laughs> Once you're happy with your heart, at this point it looks really weird because everybody associates a heart with blood. I mean, your heart is inside your body. So now it's time for all the blood. If I just painted this with food coloring, it would just sort of eventually dry. And I wanted this to look like a fresh beating heart. You know what I mean? Like the heart that's been ripped from your chest by someone who doesn't deserve you. You know what I mean? Sadly, we all, we've all been there. We have, we have, and some of us have done the ripping. You know what I mean? Not me, but. I'm sure you have broken many a heart. Unwillingly, of course. Well, if I have, it was a very long time ago. To make the blood, I mix food coloring in with some seedless raspberry jam. It's perfect because it stays shiny and gloopy, and you could like fill the tops of the valve. It's good stuff. I mean, it says eat your heart out, so that's what I did. To stand in front of it and look at it and eat it was, you know what I mean? It was yeah. a lot, it was a bit much. Finally, we're gonna talk about a cake that is for the lovers. I think this is like the quintessential Valentine gift. This is the gift that whether you planned or not, you can run to the drugstore and get this gift. Be honest, like if a guy got you no, I a would not. box of chocolates, 
Like, wouldn't you be like, are we in 1960? I love chocolate. So if it was like from a chocolate company with like a yeah. selection of my favorite <laughs> fillings, then I'd be okay. But if it was like you just ran and got like a heart shaped box of turtles, like no. How many of you would be okay with a box of chocolates? I also feel like the gift is skewed. Like you always see men giving it to women, but not women giving yeah. it to men. Why? Men like what? chocolate. So I'm going for a big box of chocolates. The cake is not very high, it's very low, and it's the base for your chocolates. And in this cake, I made chocolates to put in it, but if that's too far for you, you could just buy chocolates, right? Yeah. That your boyfriend or girlfriend loves and put them on top of the cake. So it's- And the good thing I love with this cake is, correct me if I'm wrong, if they bake a sheet cake, they can just use a template, right? And cut yeah. the heart? Yeah, you can bake a sheet cake. Hold on, what did I do? What did, oh, I baked, oh, I baked a square cake and a round cake. And then oh. you bake a smaller round cake and then you cut the round cake in half and you and put, put it the... on two perpendicular sides of the square. So that's another way that you can make a heart. But if it was smaller, you could just bake a slab cake and, and cut out a heart. And then the tricky part is that you have to wrap the outside of the cake with fondant and it better be really sturdy fondant or gum paste so it stays nice and upright and you have that lip for the chocolates to stay contained. And then for the lid, I simply covered styrofoam because this way it's light, you can rest on top. Hmm. There's all kinds of things you can do. What do you get your husband for Valentine's Day, yo? Usually what we do on Valentine's Day is we go out to a restaurant. And then yeah, I usually get a gift, but men are hard. Actually, you know what one of my favorite Valentine's gifts is? It was from my dad. Uh, my parents went on vacation and my sister and I stayed home. So my father left us both Valentine's Day cards, which we didn't open because it's not like a birthday, you're not expecting like something good inside, right? Yeah. But then when we opened it on Valentine's Day, it had like a, a riddle in it that, oh. that led us to the fridge. We had like a second fridge that led us to the fridge and in the freezer was a ice cream cake. You know I love ice cream. Yeah. So there was like a heart-shaped ice cream cake that said happy Valentine's Day girls and whatever. So then through the week while my parents were away, we just kept eating the cake, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of cut from the edges to the center. And then when we got to the center piece, it was like the last piece, so we were gonna split it. So we took a knife and we were trying to cut it and I'm like, it must be so frozen on the inside. We couldn't cut it for some reason. So we just started eating it with a spoon and it was because my dad had them bury two rings oh. in the Valentine, in the ice cream cake. So that we didn't so get it to the last slice. And oh then we God. each got like a ring. And you know what I love about that story is he was 120% confident that you would eat the whole cake. <laughs> Absolutely. Cause it was like right in the dead center. And a heart's like, not like a round. So it was like, we yeah. kind of cut the edges and like we kept just cutting in weird ways and they were in the center. So yeah. I love that. Your husband really doesn't stand a chance. I'm you know? Sure well, you know, if he, he could do it again and put like a diamond on the ring. Yes. Then I'd, yes. Uh, I would, uh, I'd let that pass. You know what I mean? It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Guys, what is the best Valentine's Day gift you've ever gotten? Let me know. I know there's someone out there that got like a car with a giant bow on it. You know how you see that on TV? I want to know. I remember making this cake. I was like, should I paint a pattern on it or just leave it? And it was one of those things where I knew I should have painted a pattern, but the minute I started painting it, I was like, this is going to take hours. And it did. <laughs> It did. And then of course it needs a huge bow because that's the other thing. They're always so bowed up. Don't you yeah, notice that? Totally. So I made a gum paste bow to go on top. That's cool. And tell me how you made the chocolates again. Oh, I had some chocolate molds, which you can find almost anywhere now. And then I used compound chocolate, which is great because it comes in colors. So you can use pink for Valentine's Day, red, purple, anything you like. And then I think I did a peanut butter filling caramel and then I did just straight up ganache in the other one which is which is yummy you have to fill the mold with chocolate let it set then pipe in your filling and then you have to cover the top with chocolate so now it's sealed after your chocolates are set you can pop them out of your molds and then I took it a next step and I drizzled some of them with a different color chocolate on top 
And then I just piled them all on top of the cake. Oh my God, guys. What? I just realized I'm not recording. <laughs> Okay, I just love the footage of me lining up all these little chocolates. <laughs> you just need a minute to watch that? Yeah, I really feel like eating a chocolate right now. Oh, I put a four on the tag. This was our four year anniversary. Yeah, cause our how to cake it anniversary always falls the week of Valentine's Day. Yeah. So I put happy Valentine's Day and then I put a little four inside of a heart. I completely forgot the best Valentine's Day gift because my husband, who was not my husband at the time, had a painting painted of me from a picture he had of me. And it's actually really gorgeous. It's not like one of those creepy portraits. It's like really modern. And he hung it in his condo and I forgot that. You see who I am now that I've been married to him for 10 years? I'm like, what has he gotten me? What? I don't even remember. I, that's just horrible. I'm horrible. I cut the cake. I put it on a heart shaped plate. I went all the way with the Valentine's. Like it was very Valentine's Day. And you can make those chocolates on their own, right? And just eat those. That's the thing. You could just make the chocolates and put them in a box. You could do okay. that too. Cause I think a gift from the heart is nice on Valentine's Day. A gift that you've actually made with your hands, 100%. Yes. Like yes. so sweet, 100%. Yeah, I agree. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Galentine's Day. Happy, pa how about Palentine's Day? Oh yes, that's so guys, for guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Jengis, now you know what you can do. It doesn't matter if you're in love or not. It's, it's another great day. We gotta live it, right? If you guys need more cake, click here.